Do you get shoulder pain when lifting weights? If you'd like to learn how you can continue working out without causing or worsening shoulder pain, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and as an avid weightlifter myself, I know how annoying it is when you have to take time away from the gym due to an injury. And I've had a few serious shoulder injuries in my life, but fortunately, by applying the principles that I'll share with you in this video, I've been injury free for about the last 20 years. So let's start out with what causes shoulder pain when you're lifting weights in the first place. Most shoulder injuries from lifting weights happen with pushing movements. For example, bench press, shoulder press, or shoulder movements like lateral raises and front raises. And I'll show you later in this video some specific tips for each of those exercises to do them more safely without injuring your shoulders. But largely the things that cause shoulder injuries when you're lifting weights are either going too heavy, using improper form, or muscle imbalances. Now, one of the main issues that happens when people are doing pressing type movements is the ball of the shoulder will come too far forwards in the socket and start to pinch on the rotator cuff tendons specifically the supraspinatus, which attaches right on the front of the shoulder and runs underneath a little arc of bone. Additionally, your arm and your shoulder blade have to move together when you're doing overhead movements like shoulder presses. And if you're not getting the shoulder blades and the arms moving in a proper sequencing and proper coordination, then you're more likely to injure the rotator cuff tendons. So let's first start out with the shoulder press movement because that's probably the one where people develop the most shoulder injuries or have the most problems after they've already sustained a shoulder injury. So with the shoulder press, I would highly recommend doing it sitting down because it's better on your lower back and you're less likely to use momentum from your legs or arching your back if you're sitting in a chair or on a bench where you have back support. So that's one tip, is to take your lower back out of it and sit in a chair or on a bench that has a good back support. Now next, it's a good idea to use dumbbells, particularly if you already have a shoulder injury, because it's gonna cause you to work the strong side and the not as strong side equally without compensating and overusing the strong side to compensate for the weaker side. Next, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your elbows slightly in front of the plane of your body. It's very common for people to think that you should do a shoulder press with your arms perfectly out to the side like this, where the dumbbells are in line with your head. Now, if you're using a barbell, of course that wouldn't work because you'd come down right on top of your head. And doing behind the neck presses with a barbell put even further strain on your shoulders. So keep your elbows slightly in front of the plane of your body. And what that does is it helps maintain shoulder external rotation. You need this shoulder external rotation movement to clear the greater tuberosity or a bump on your shoulder as you're going up over your head to avoid pinching the rotator cuff tendons. So you wanna push your elbows out forward slightly and have your hands at least over top of your elbows, but possibly even slightly behind your elbows. So you're gonna start out like that. And then when you press the weight up, you don't wanna just think about lifting the weights because you have to move your shoulder blades and your arms at the same time. So it's not just an arm movement like that. You need to get your shoulder blades moving in coordination with your arms. So. When you're going up, you want your shoulder blades to start the movement, moving out to the side there, and then your arms are following along like that. So you can see the shoulder blades move up and away from the spine as you're doing the shoulder press movement. And so from the front, you want to keep your shoulders externally rotated, push your elbows and shoulder blades up, and then let your arms kind of follow along. And so that's the shoulder press. Next, we'll move on to a bench press. But before we actually do this lying down, it's helpful to see it in the context of a push-up 
because you can see what the shoulder blades are doing better in a push-up. When you do a bench press, again, the shoulder blades need to move away from your body using a muscle called the serratus anterior, as well as your pectoralis minor and your pectoralis major. So you want to first think about the shoulder blade movement of moving your shoulder blades away from the spine like that. When your shoulder blade is back this way, your chest muscles actually don't have a great pull on your humerus or your arm bone to pull it across your body. So you actually need a little bit of shoulder protraction in order to give your chest muscles a better line of pull to finish the movement and bring your arm in. And so start the movement by protracting your shoulders and then you finish off by pushing your elbows together. People will often describe this movement if you're doing it with a barbell as breaking the bar because if you think about bending the bar in half, it's gonna focus on you bringing your elbows together which activates your serratus anterior as well as gives you some shoulder external rotation. Now to see that from the top view, if you're doing a push-up, which is essentially the reverse of a bench press, if you let your shoulder blades sink too far together at the bottom of the movement, then you're gonna have a hard time coming back up. So you really need to activate your serratus anterior by pushing your shoulder blades forwards. And then even as you're lowering your arms, you wanna keep that isometric contraction as best as possible of the serratus anterior. So you're trying to stay fairly protracted throughout the movement and then lowering down. Your shoulder blades will come together a little bit, especially towards the bottom. If you're going chest to ground or bar to chest, doing a bench press. So if you have the option, i.e. you're not competing, I would recommend stopping a few inches short of the ground or bar a few inches short of your chest when doing a bench press. So now that we've covered the basic mechanics, let's go over to a bench. Now there are a couple other principles to keep in mind when you're doing an actual bench press. Number one, you don't want to let your elbow drop down too far because that'll glide the ball of your shoulder forward and make you more likely to pinch the rotator cuff tendons. Additionally, you want to think about starting the motion by pressing your shoulder blades forward driving your upper back into the bench and activating your serratus anterior and chest muscles to bring the shoulder blades forward first, then continue the motion by bringing your elbows together. Come back down and keep the serratus anterior activated so it keeps your shoulder blades forwards. Again, if you let them drop back like that too much, your chest muscles lose their line of pull. So keep the shoulder blades slightly forward, Press up with your arms, keep the shoulder blades forward, lower the arms back down. Additionally, it's good to keep your chin in a tucked position as opposed to pressing back into the bench with your head because the nerves to your shoulders also come out of your neck. And you can pinch nerves by pressing back too hard into the bench with your head or also strain muscles in your neck. So tuck your chin in, keep your spine in a neutral position. Let the weight drop down. Start the movement by pushing your shoulder blades forward. Then continue the motion by driving your arms together. The last two exercises that I'll cover are lateral raises, raising out to the side, which work your lateral deltoids or middle shoulder muscles. And then the front raise, which works your anterior deltoids or the front part of your shoulder muscles. Now, when you're raising out to the side like this, this works the middle head of your deltoids. And your deltoid muscles have an upward pull, but they also glide the ball of your shoulder upwards. And that can create some impingement in your shoulder joint where that ball of the shoulder starts to ride up into the rotator cuff tendons. And so you need to be able to use your rotator cuff tendons to depress or pull the ball of the shoulder down as you're raising the arm up. So it makes it more like a rotation instead of everything moving up as a unit. Additionally, you need to be able to move the shoulder blades up and out. So the arch of the shoulder should actually raise up as you're doing a lateral raise. 
And to do that, you don't want to think about a pure axis of rotation around the shoulder joint right there. You want to actually think about flaring your shoulder blades out to the side like that. That'll again activate your serratus anterior. And then you follow through with activating your deltoids. This gives your deltoids a better line of pull throughout the movement. It also helps you avoid pinching your rotator cuff tendons. Now, if you are going to go above shoulder level, you need to turn your hands that way. I wouldn't recommend doing that with a lateral raise because you really work your lateral deltoids best when your palms are in towards your sides like this. But that is somewhat of an internal rotation position. So you can't go much above shoulder level without creating pinching or impingement of the rotator cuff tendons. So just go to shoulder level or even slightly below. Now the hardest part of this motion is at the top at 90 degrees. So you may need to do your first couple repetitions all the way up to 90 degrees. And then as you fatigue, it's actually okay with this exercise if you lose a little bit of range of motion and have to do slightly lower down. You'll still be working your shoulders, but you won't be impinging your rotator cuff tendons. And if you can do a set where you're going all the way through a full range of motion for the entire set, it's likely that you probably haven't exhausted your shoulder muscles fully. So again, it is okay to lose just a little bit of range of motion as you go farther into the set. Now for the final exercise with the front raise, you can actually supinate your forearms or externally rotate your shoulders a little bit with this one. It's probably the best for your shoulder to have thumbs directly up, but it's okay if you're kind of at a 45 degree angle like that as well, which will give you a slightly better angle of pull on your anterior deltoid. So again, raising up like that, just a shoulder level. With this one, you still need to move your shoulder blades, but they're tipping more down and back with this movement rather than out to the side. So thinking about tipping the shoulder blades backwards, not leaning your body backwards, but depressing the shoulder blades, using your lower trapezius to pull the shoulder blades back like that as you raise the arms up forwards. So hopefully you did find these tips helpful if you have shoulder pain and you'd like to continue working out. Now, if you are in the St. Louis area and you need some more help for shoulder pain, we'd be happy to help you out here at More for Life. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, we've got several other tips on how to relieve shoulder pain in our shoulder pain relief playlist. And you can check that out right over there. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.